Hello, and welcome to Looking Up, A View from the Valley. My name is Mark Weissman, and thank you very, very much for watching. I'm very excited about this brand new television show that will hopefully be educational and informative for the entire family. If you have any comments on the show, feel free to provide feedback, questions, or suggestions to lookingupvalley at gmail.com or check out our Facebook page and dedicated website. Thank you very much. Today we are with the Valley United Way in the Catherine Matthews Conference Room at their new location at the former Lafayette School in Shelton. So first of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to bring our show to your new location. Uh, it looks great. And uh, today we're joined with Fred Ortoli, uh, who is chairman of the board of the Valley United Way, uh, Jack Walsh, who is president and COO of the Valley United Way, uh, Joe Pagliaro, who is responsible for... Campaign chair. Campaign chair, thank you. And Adrian Cabral, who is uh, responsible for the funding allocation. Yes. Uh, so again, thank you very much for coming today. Um, I just love the fact that uh, the panel that we have today, uh, I think it'll cover, we'll be able to cover a lot of the, uh, sort of how the, the Valley United Way works. got started, how it works, um, everyone's sort of individual responsibility within the organization, and then we can talk about, you know, kind of the overall goal, the overall mission. Um, so, uh, so if we could, we'll start with you, Fred. Um, what I'd like to do first is, is just give the viewers a little bit of a flavor of what they, where you're from originally, um, how you got involved with the Valley United Way, and maybe how your, your personal background sort of played a role in you actually becoming in this uh, philanthropic organization. Okay. Uh, I was born in Derby, grew up in Ansonomy, and uh, now live in Oxford. Okay, um, so you're a Valley boy all over. All through. That's yeah. great, that's great. Um, I got into volunteer work probably because of my parents' example. Okay. And uh, something I enjoy doing. Are your parents also Valley born and raised? Yes. Oh, excellent. They still live in the Valley? My mom is uh, still in the Sony. Oh, excellent. That's great. That's great. So, um, so, so as far as, like when you were a kid, did you get involved in any volunteer work as a child? Not that I remember. Okay. I think it, it came later on as far as I remember. Okay. Okay. And then when did you, I guess, was the Valley United Way your first foray into volunteer work, or did you actually do other things? I think it was my, if not my first, it was definitely one of my first. Right. Um, I honestly don't remember how I originally got involved. It was uh, Jack's predecessor that got me involved. Okay. And who was that? Uh, uh, Lou Savitsky. Okay. Okay. Good. And so, so, as, so now you're chairman of the board. I imagine you didn't start as chairman of the board. Yeah. Um, so what was your initial role when you first started the United Way? Just a volunteer, trying to help out wherever I could. Okay. Do you remember specific projects you worked on at that time? It, um, or even more, or even more recently. General, uh, I think I started doing some pictures for, uh, for them originally. And oh, that's involved. right. You're a yeah. photographer. Yes. That's your, your full-time job. And then I, I got involved with Corporate Volunteer Council on uh, Week of Caring Projects and, and things uh, like that. Okay, yeah, and I definitely want to talk about the Corporate Volunteer Council. I mean, honestly, I, only until recently did I actually hear about that and know what it is. So um, uh, so there's, and it seems like it's it, a spinoff or, or kind of works in conjunction with the United Way. Yes, it's a so, fantastic project. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, and then, so you did that, and then you kind of, I guess, kind of, how did you kind of make your way up to become chairman? I was nominated, there's a nominated committee that okay. just like board members and... Uh, Nobody raised their hands, so you just said, I'll <laughs> <laughs> You've done everything else. Or somebody else raised your hand. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes that happens, hand. happens too, right? Okay, oh, that's good. And, you'll, and you've been doing your chairman for two years now? This is the start of my second year. Wow, so congratulations. That's Thank great. You. That's great. Um, I guess over the last, as chairman over the last two years, what would you say, what, what accomplishment of the organization are you most proud of? One of the projects is to move into this building. Oh, yeah, it was, sure. Uh, just a fantastic uh, coordination project between um, city, mm -hmm. uh, nonprofit organization, and uh, industry. So the city of yeah. Shelton actually helped you move as well? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, because your former location was at the Sinto Towers, right? The corporate, yes. corporate towers over there. Um, and uh, how long were you in that location? Do you know? Five and a half years. Okay, all right. Uh, and before that, just curious, where were you before Liberty that? Street in Ansonia. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're actually in Ansonia. That's mm -hmm. good. Because one of the things, you're located twice now in Shelton, but you are the Valley United Way. And so my, my sort of question is, how do you maintain sort of an overall picture when it's easy? It'd be very easy to get sort of biased towards the town that you're actually located in because people are going to conveniently walk in here and say, you know, help this, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to, you know, so how, it's, it's tough, I think. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce, same situation, you know, Valley Arts Council in Derby, but yet serves the whole valley. So I, I just, just wondering. Because the, the origin of Valley and Iowa is in those separate towns. 
uh, long before it was Valley United Way. The towns had their own uh, United Ways or Community Chess or Red right, Feather Societies. Right. Those were different names they had early on. Right. And then in 1968, just a couple of years after the, the Greater Valley or the Valley Chamber of Commerce was formed, mm -hmm. they did the same thing with United Ways to put them all together. So that was 1968 oh, okay. 69. So th there were individual organizations in the towns, and they saw the advantage of doing it together. And what's unique about the valley is there is a valley identity. In addition to the town identity, people do say, I'm from the valley. Oh, absolutely. It has, absolutely. has meaning, so it made it a little bit easier. Do you know, I mean, I know, Jack, you were very highly involved in the Derby Historical Society for a long time. And Derby, as we learned on some earlier shows, was the entire valley, really, essentially. Um, except for Shelton. Except for Shelton, that's right. But it broke, you know, so you had all these things. Right. So, so where, I mean, you, from a historical perspective, where do you think that sort of community feel came from. I mean, it's just because you have thousands of towns in the U.S. that happen to be neighbors, but I definitely, I agree with you. I don't know if they have the same kind of passion about their region as opposed to their own particular town. I, I think it was the transportation that went through and, and the industries. If you look at it, they had similar industries. That's true. Along. Good point. You know, it was Good the point. Industrial Revolution. And, yep. Uh, yep. And the immigrants that came in. Absolutely. You know, I, I think it was just a common background that made it easier. And you know, to some degree, uh, just the natural geography of the area mm -hmm. made it distinct from, right. from other areas. I mean, physically it's it is valley. a valley, so yeah. yeah, you're going to be sort of, you know, together. I, I, don't, I don't think there's another area in the state where there is uh, both a local town identity and a regional I, community I, I identity agree. Agree. the way there is here in the valley. Yeah, I agree. It's, a, it's, very, uh, it's very strong, there's no doubt. Um, okay, um, so Jack, I guess the same kind of questions to you. Where did you grow up? Uh, you again, Valley born and raised, and then kind of how? What was your sort of your process of you know, going from childhood to adulthood, specifically with volunteer work, since that's what this organization contacts? I guess my background is just derby all the way. And right. Yeah, you know, I, I live in the same house that I, I grew up oh, really? in years wow. ago, which you don't see too much of that. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, that that's true. Uh, but my involvement with the United Way ended up. Uh, well, let me backtrack. I learned to swim as a kid at a place called the Recreation Camp in Derby. Which okay. Is, yeah, you know, just an incredible summer swimming camp for kids. And years later, I ended up running the recreation camp. I did that for 14 years. Now, right now, there's the Valley Y that's in, in town, and I know a lot of kids tend to swim there. And they're actually going to be appear on our show as well. Was there a, was the YMCA around in that time frame? Oh yeah, the, oh, okay. the y, YMCA goes back. Uh, they're actually one of the oldest nonprofits in the Valley. Really, they were about yeah. 140 years old. Wow, and they were couple of YMCA's in the valley at one time. Okay. Uh, but the, the rec is an outdoor swimming camp. It's oh, indoors. I see. It's just oh, a okay. summer camp for kids. Okay. has no national affiliation, just right. local. It was started by business people in the valley who saw a need for a safe summer place. There were no swimming pools or state right. parks. We're, we're going back 1916, 17, and I wasn't around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I did learn to swim there as a kid, and then through my involvement with sports and recreation sure. years later, I ended up running the place. What sports did you play? Uh, mainly softball and basketball. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. I was the boys basketball coach at Shelton Oh, High that's right. Ten years. Yes, I did know that. Uh, and I ended up running the camp, and that's really when I got heavily involved with the United Way. I was a volunteer speaker for them. And I used to always tell the story. You know, when I when I went to the recreation camp, we paid fifty cents for the summer. Okay, and if you couldn't pay the fifty cents, you could pay ten cents every time you went until you got to the fifty cents. Okay? <laughs> and I joke with people. You know, I always thought, gee, don't all kids go to camp for fifty cents? <laughs> wow. wow. And of course, the reason it was only fifty cents was because United Way supported mm -hmm. that camp back then. So years later, I ended up running the camp, and boy, inflation had really hit. But when I wow. started uh, the camp, it was $2 for the entire summer. And I remember at our board of directors meeting really having a big fight because we had to raise it from $2 to $5. Oh, my God. Uh, That's a 250% increase. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the funny thing was that even when we did that, the, the kids used to get a free lunch every day. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to tell people, this is an investment. If you pay $5 and you get a free lunch every day for nine weeks, I think <laughs> You made money on it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Sure. So it's one of the yeah, you know, it's one of the great success stories of, oh, of that's the good. valley. And that's good. From that, that's how I ended up here at United Way. Wow, okay. So when you joined United Way, what was your initial role? Kind of the same thing. What kind of questions or projects did you work on? I, I was just a volunteer, I was a speaker. Oh, okay. Uh, when they did campaigns, Lusovitsky was mentioned before, he used to coordinate that and he looked for people from the agencies to come and tell the story. 
because it just uh, as it is today, it's important for people to know what happens to the money they give. Oh, absolutely. Okay, and the rec camp happens to be one of those. Yeah, who stories. that actually brings up a question to me. <clears throat> Who, other than yourselves, is there sort of a governing body that oversees the United Way to make sure, like, like for instance, if you get grants, I imagine you guys are entitled to grants, um, who makes sure that that grant money is, goes where you said it's going to go? Well, that, that's our board of directors. Oh, okay. Okay, our board okay. of directors, and uh, we're audited annually. Okay. Uh, all that information is available, our 990s, et right. cetera. Right, right. Uh, that's really one of the strengths of the United Way. Uh, on top of that, we also have membership standards that we have to meet in. In fact, uh, our board just uh, why this morning saying that we meet all the guidelines of the United Way worldwide. Okay. And then, of course, we do the same thing with the agencies that we fund. Uh, Adrian can tell you more about that when we get sure, to her. Sure. But, uh, all the agencies that receive funding are examined for their programs, their budgets, oh, and budgets. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's going on as we speak. So Adrian will be the oh, go to person on Okay, that. absolutely. Well, Joe, since you're next in line here, we'll, we'll go to you first. Um, the uh, Your role is, uh, I guess, to get some of that, that money and get the funding. Get the funding. So, uh, again, start, you know, you're, where you're from, um, kind of how you got involved the United Way, what sort of things did you do prior to that to actually get yourself acclimated? I'm from Shelton, been here all my life, um, and I'm four out of five generations in the Valley. Wow. wow. Uh, my family's always been very philanthropically involved throughout the entire Valley. My father was a former campaign chair uh, here at United Way oh, really? in the 90s. Okay. <clears throat> he was the founding chair of the Valley Community Foundation before oh, he passed wow. away in 2004. And I think every wow. organization award he served on, he was either president, vice wow. president, or <laughs> chair of a campaign. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so my involvement started as a child. I remember as a child going to uh, the Boys and Girls Club Memorial Day Pancake Breakfast, serving <laughs> orange juice and learning wow. the pancakes. Wow, that's great. And then Jack talked about the great success of the rec camp. That was something that my grandfather was one of the founders of. Uh, they had an annual fundraiser every year, lobster and steak dinner, oh, which really? continues throughout this present year coming up in June. Mm -hmm. uh, and Were I was sorry, go down there, and, and the first time you go down there and you're a kid, they give you a special job. <laughs> and they don't tell you what it is to yes. get there. Right. Well, the special job is you get to crack lobster claws for about 130 people wow. with wow. a mallet. Oh, my God. So not one of those little no, squeezy guys. No, you're a big mallet. It's like three, <laughs> three, four pound lobsters, and you end up full of <laughs> oh lobster. My God. But it, oh, it's a great cool. tradition with great value, and you work with these tremendous people that are so self-giving of themselves and I think that's what makes the Valley distinctive from other communities oh, absolutely. that absolutely. we are all there for each other in, in each other's times of need and I've never seen groups of people pull together mm -hmm. so well and never ask for the credit. Yeah, you're right. Just yeah. do the job. Very humble. The job very, very humble community. I agree with that. The uh, Where did the lobsters come from? Uh, they get them from somewhere in Milford. I think Charlie oh, it was local. Is, no, Charlie Sullivan is. They're very good. That's all I got. They're very good. Yeah, they're very it tasted good. delicious. Yeah, That's right. Well, secret recipes, the whole thing. Uh, yeah. and nice. The stuffing and okay. the steaks and oh, how wow. we prepare everything. Uh, nice. But it's a great success story of how you know you help you know these little kids who get to go swimming there and, and have a great oh, summer. Oh, absolutely. Wouldn't be able to otherwise. Now, were you a Boy Scout as a child? Uh, Cub Scout. Cub Scout. Okay, there you Cub go. Scout. Okay, actually, I didn't ask that of you. Were either one of you Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts? Cub Scout. Cub Scout. And yourself? Cub Scout for a while. But okay, that's okay. I think, that's okay. I think there's, a, there's a link there. It's kind of like music and engineering, <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. I think there's a link all the time. But that's good. Um, so, okay, so continue. I'm sorry. You're... It's just been my experience. That, you know, the Valley's been very good to my family. Mm -hmm. uh, we own two funeral homes. My father found the Riverview Funeral Home in 1968 here right. in Shelton. Right. In 1999, we acquired Edward F. And Zima Funeral Home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were always taught from a young age to give back. Right. Because right. everyone may not have been fortunate as you are. Um, now my family, through the Valley Community Foundation, uh, runs an Easter egg hunt every year for approximately 250 kids at the Boys and Girls Club. Oh, wow. And we end up with about 500 people. And again, the Boys and Girls Club and their generosity donates the gym and their uh, kids' services for free that day to my family. Wow. And it's all intertwined, and that's the beauty of the whole thing. And, you know, I know Jack with the, uh, these high school kids back here mm -hmm, and our mm -hmm. leadership program and so forth. The kids are at all the events, and it's a breath of fresh air to see these children oh, absolutely. involved at a young age. It's nice, because if they're it's not only all an audience, but they're actually doing it, they're, they're going to show up, their friends are going to show up, their family's going to show up, and you're basically going to spread the